Super quickly diving in here for the very start of the video to say a huge apology because when we went to put this whole thing together, Ed Boon's team, the PR team that put the video side of things together, sadly didn't come through with the video recording itself. So we have audio only. However, I'm begging you to still listen to the interview overall. I got to ask all the very good questions. I asked about Shaolin Monk's sequel. I asked about Injustice 3. I asked Ed what his favorite fatality was in the new Mortal Kombat 1. I managed to get all the good things in this video um, and I guarantee it's still a good listen. So thank you all very, very much for sticking around and apologies we don't have the video to go with this as well. Please enjoy the graphic that Mr. Dan Durkin has come up with. Hey, so good to, to talk to you. Um, I wanted to start with just a genuine um, thank you. You've made decades worth of some of my favorite games, so I was always going to open with that. I don't have that much time, so I want to dive into as many uh, questions as I can. What's your personal favorite new fatality in Mortal Kombat 1? Oh, there, there are a lot of really good ones. Um, oddly, uh, my favorite fatalities are the the the, the reimagined classic ones that mm -hmm. that we've done. We had this ridiculous one where Cyrax would drop a whole bunch of bombs and then the world would explode, <laughs> um, and um, and we recreated it. And I think that's my favorite one in the game. It's so <laughs> ridiculous. It's uh, it's it's just fun to see something a really dumb idea we had in our twenties uh, reimagined. Uh, <laughs> taking something as over the top as that is a really good way to go as well in terms of like pushing it even further yeah. um to that vein as well um i love seeing motaro in the story like getting more scenes with him and everything um it's just a straight question like what was the the giddiest most fun thing that you brought back where it, you're just kind of laughing to yourself that you're bringing this thing back and doing more with this particular thing motaro was a big one um, right I mean, he, he's <laughs> such a he's such an oddly shaped character he was only a boss character in Mortal Kombat 3. I think we might have made him playable in 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 trilogy, but having him absent for 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 a long time, you know, uh years and years, maybe over a decade. Um and then coming back was such a fun thing and we were we were really biting our tongue holding on to when players would see that character. Right. And when they saw we we had a presentation at, at San Diego Comic Con, and when they saw him and 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 lost their minds, that was uh, that was a great that was a great <laughs> moment. I was very much one of those people. Um, so I wanted to um just ask about something. Back in 2007, you talked to CVG Magazine about rebooting Mortal Kombat towards the end of the 2000s. Um, apparently you'd seen Gears of War, and you were talking about maybe overhauling quite a lot of stuff. Um, obviously we eventually did that. There was the 2011 version and the MK1 that we have now. But um, does that come to mind quite easily? Or I, I had some fun quotes that you said at the time about how much you were going to be, you said you weren't joking around, you were wanted to do a more realistic fighting game, and when you had no obligation to bring back favorite characters, etc. What was that version of Mortal Kombat going to be, if you remember it? I think I was, as, as far as I can remember, I think I was describing the game that we were intending to make in uh, Mortal Kombat 9, which we just called Mortal Kombat. Mm. Um, it, it came out in 2011, I believe. And... Um, it, it it was something that I think needs to be done, especially with a series that's been around for 31, 32 years. Um, we you do need to introduce something new and you do need to really wipe the slate clean uh, in order to ensure that it, it it feels fresh, ensure that it feels there's a new, a newness feeling to it. And I think doing that and adding new features to every game has helped us stay kind of you know, Mortal Kombat is as big as it's ever been 30 mm -hmm. years later. I don't know how many other franchises, whether games or, or other media, have, have managed to do that. And, and I, I, I credit it a lot to us just really shaking the cage uh, quite a bit. That was one thing, um, because I finished the game, I pretty much did it in one sitting for the story mode. I like really oh. loved the um the just the feeling of authorship that I feel you've always had to the story modes. And uh, so I thought that was I like totally agree, was massively executed on. Um one thing I was gonna ask about is um Shaolin Monks. I know you've been asked this tons. Um in 2013, you were talking about Shaolin Monks HD. There was a Twitter poll about whether you should do a remaster or a sequel. Um remaster won 55.4%. Just any general update or just any thoughts whatsoever uh, whatsoever on a potential re-release or anything like that for Shaolin. The monks well it is absolutely something that we've talked about doing we've when you think about it though i think shaolin monks was god what year was it 2006 or something or uh 2007 so. um so it was a long time ago and the, the the kind of gaming landscape has changed quite a bit so i'm a little concerned over just doing a remaster and not adding something new like online co-op play Mm. or you know uh you know in, enhancing the the, the cutscenes and all that stuff 
but there is an unmade follow-up to Shaolin Monks that is needs to be made. Mm -hmm. And um, we've currently been so busy with our Mortal Kombat 1 and before that Mortal Kombat 11 that it's been uh, a little tougher to, to give that traction. But um, it isn't by any means because of a lack of interest or motivation from our part. It's 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 resources and it's mm. uh, we just got to figure out how to do it. I do think it holds up really well, just to say, like I'm playing it on um, Steam Deck and stuff. Like I still think it holds up really, really well. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask a quick question for um, having finished the story and just obviously for people as they finish and everything. Um, it really felt like across a lot of the story, you were building up to a potential Onaga reveal, like bringing back Onaga or something. Um, I know that doesn't happen, obviously, but I was just curious if that was the end goal or whether it is more, you know, bring the dragon army you mentioned to Mashi. And um, I, in my head, I was like, oh, my God, they do an Onaga at the very end. Um, is that in the conversation at all, maybe DLC or something like that? I know he's mentioned at the end of Reiko's Arcade Tower, but I, I just thought I'd ask that as well. Well, it it oh now the the reintroduction of like Onagas it it certainly was not something that was our end game goal. It was more so we just wanted to make a whole bunch of references to some of our previous games. We had you know Shang Tsung and Quan Chi together was kind of like a Deadly Alliance reference. Yes, we had we had references to to the the you know a number of those the the three D games that we made. Whether it's and we brought back a number of 3D characters, Lee May and um, Havoc and Astra. So a, a lot of it was more like of a, of a nostalgic kind of look back and trying to reference those games. And um, but but we we weren't like our goal wasn't like let's get our way to Onaga. Right. Okay. That's fair. I think it's just me growing up with Onaga, wishing for yeah. more Onaga stuff. Um, what was the biggest um, breath of fresh air change that you brought into MK1? Obviously, there's a lot of changes, there's lots of callbacks, and things. The history kind of repeats as the story plays out. But was there something you were, in a way, glad to get rid of, or just something that was like, oh, we can, you know, something like Scorpion is now uh, Kwai Lan, for example, or something like that, where you were quite happy to sort of have a breath of fresh air? We tried to do that on a number of levels. Um, we obviously reset the story and we, we wanted to tell something like a little bit more of an origin story as opposed to the part 12 of a, mm. of a much longer 30 year story. Um, we absolutely wanted to reset the gameplay. And that was really the, the, the motivation was, you know, to add the cameo fighters and have that dynamic of, you know, pairs of fighters as opposed to uh, single fighters um, uh, as, as, as part of like the, the strategy for players and selecting fighters. And we also wanted to add something new, which was invasions, which is kind of, you know, it has elements of the crypt and has elements of some of our, our previous uh, single player experiences, but we did want something new. So I think thematically, whenever we do a Mortal Kombat game, we're, we kind of ask the question, well, what's new about this one that nobody's played before? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that means getting rid of features from previous games just to make this one feel more unique so we don't have the character variations from mortal kombat x or mortal kombat 11 we don't have the the background interactions where you're throwing objects and jumping off things not because we didn't like those features those those, those games did really well for us but we feel it's more important that we bring something new to the table and 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 kind of answer the question you know for players well you know, why should I care about this game? And we're like, mm -hmm. for all these reasons. Yeah, it's almost like dialing it back a little bit. Um, my final question is just a general sort of thing that um, that springboards off something Jeff Grubb mentioned, reporter Jeff Grubb mentioned in 2021, um, about how Mortal Kombat 12 was uh, sort of almost in development alongside Injustice 3, and just whether or not going forward, is it is it Injustice next, or are you waiting to see what to do next? Well, I, I, I'm i probably not allowed to talk about what we're going to do next, <laughs> um, but... Uh, one thing we are going to be doing, which we've done in our, our past few games, is is we will be releasing more um, more content for Mortal Kombat One, right? If if you remember in Mortal Kombat Eleven, we released more story content and more more characters, and you know we 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 really would like to follow suit as far as just releasing and supporting the game for uh, you know as long of a period as time as possible. We will probably start at least discussing our next game, but our main focus right now is um, supporting Mortal Kombat 1. Awesome. That's great. Thank you very much. And thanks again for taking the time. This was great. Thank you. Oh, thanks. It was my pleasure. <laughs> Cheers.